Republican-led legislature and the and Governor Hobbs have very different goals this session. So is there anything that could have been done differently so far? And what's the path forward? Joining me to talk about that and the other stories of this week, Republican Doug Cole and former top staffer for Governor Symington and Chad Campbell, Campbell, a former Democratic state lawmaker. Thank you both for being here. And let's start. Uh, Governor, you know, Governor Hobbs, she followed through on the threat of the veto. She said she was going to veto this budget. She did. Um, what could she be doing? What's the lesson to be learned here? Uh, you know, don't send up <laughs> ridiculous ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, nothing here is shocking. This was, I, I think, in my eyes at least, an attempt from the Republicans to kind of unify their caucus. Uh, you know, everybody knew Governor Hobbs was going to veto that budget. Had she not, she would have lost all leverage. But I think the outcome of this now is the governor needs to find those adults in the legislature, bring them into a room, and start talking about a real budget. Yeah, but it's 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 up to the governor. You know, I talked to your chief of staff, you know, Allie Bones. You've worked with with governors in the past. At the end of the day, they're the, the executive. They got to figure a way out. And right now, the relationship that Governor Hobbs has with this Republican-controlled legislature is not good at all. How does she move forward on this? Well, remember, she has the biggest bully, pit, bully pulpit of all. Yeah. It's 16, 31, and 1. Mm -hmm. And she needs to learn how to be that one mm -hmm. and sit back and, and, and be strategic when she inserts herself. But she has to start getting engaged mm -hmm. and, and laying down the law. Mm -hmm. And these 13 vetoes that she did on, on uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. it's the beginning of that. They've got to learn how to start working together. And it's, it's not going to be this month or next month. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be probably three or four months down the road mm -hmm. until they figure out how they can be productive together. Yeah, you know, I'm old enough, too, to remember Governor Janet Napolitano. Yeah. And she was able to pick off uh, Republicans and get some bipartisan deals done. Is Hobbs going to be able to do that, given the dynamic between, these, uh, between, between the legislature and the executive right now? Yeah, I think so. And, and my first term was when... Governor Napolitano was still in office. Uh, you know, there were a group of us uh, on the Democratic side with a group of Republicans who met on a regular basis. We met in the basement. Actually, we called ourselves, I think, the Mushroom Caucus at one point because we never saw the light of day. And, you know, we, we worked with Governor Napolitano and her staff to come up with that budget. I, I kind of compare it now, though. I, I feel like uh, the Governor Hobbs and the Republicans are like two fighters in a ring trying to throw some jabs, figure out each other's weaknesses, mm -hmm. and eventually we're going to get to the real deal here in the next couple Should of months. Should they be doing more reach, reach out and try, trying to attempt to communicate more uh, with the Republican legislature? Uh, well, right now there's no indication that's happening. I think both sides Yeah, but, 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 but I, I think they think the, the, the budget didn't come out of the House easily. Mm -hmm. They, they yep. had some fighting within their own caucuses. Sure. And, and that's going to continue in the, in the Senate and the, in, yep. in the House. Those caucuses are, are it's a big lift for Speaker Toma and President Peterson to keep his own caucuses together and then try to deal with the dynamics of dealing with the ninth floor. All right, let's move on now. Another big challenge is here is the, her, her picks to run the agencies. Now, we mm -hmm. saw uh, Dr. Cullen withdrawing her name uh, for consideration to run the state health department. No indication that it's going to get any easier for some of the other picks for the agency here. Um, let's look backward, and then we can look a little bit forward. Sure. Do you think Dr. Cullen was prepared for that hearing that we saw? I don't, I don't think so. I think she could have been a lot better prepared. And also, I think that they needed to have more people lined up to, to testify in person for Dr. Cullen. Mm -hmm. um, that did not happen. I think we'll see that happening going forward. But this new committee on director nominations is brand new. Mm -hmm. And the Arizona Constitution allows the Senate to set their own rules under Article mm -hmm. 4, Section 8. They set their own rules. So this is a whole new game. It's never, been, it's never happened before. We're going to have another hearing on Monday. We're going to get three more directors vetted on Monday. Mm -hmm. But I, don't, I see that they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna target a few appointments, and this is going to continue. And and this new nominations committee, it is headed up by somebody we mentioned earlier in the show. It is, it is headed up by somebody, you know, who has vowed to stop Katie Hobbs's quote, woke agenda. That's the political fact of that. Katie Hobbs has got to deal with that. Yeah. How can she do that moving, moving ahead? Yeah, and I think really quick to Doug's point, I mean, I understand that there could have been more people down there to testify, et cetera. But I think you could have had Mother Teresa come down there and testify mm -hmm. on behalf of Dr. Cullen. And Senator Hoffman would have still rejected her. He had an agenda. He's had an agenda for quite a long time. We know his past. He was part of a troll farm. Uh, he's an extremist. There's no doubt about it. Uh, that was political spectacle. It was a political witch hunt. Uh, and, and at some point, the Republicans have to remember, uh, you have to govern. 
Mm -hmm. And that's the key. They have to govern and you have to allow people to govern. And if you don't get people in charge of these agencies, the state is going to start to suffer. All right. And, you know, on Monday, we're going to have another one of these. We are. Um, and we're hearing already um, some conservatives are going after one of the, one of the, uh, Governor Hobbs' other nominees. Yes. And that's, uh, that's the current uh, deputy city manager of Phoenix, Karen Peters, who is highly respected mm -hmm. uh, in, in the government and business community. And she has been uh, tapped to be the director of the Department of Economic uh, uh, quality. And we're already seeing libertarian groups already sending out mass emails tweeting uh, that, you know, she's all part of the Green New Deal. So I think she's next. And I think the, the director nominee for the Department of Child uh, Safety is also going to be a target along with the director of the Department of Corrections. All right. Well, we're going to have to wait and see how this all plays out. Thank you both, gentlemen, for stopping by here this week. But that is all the time we have. Be sure to join us next week for more Politics Unplugged. Good night.